let's do the problem. 0 is equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 3 plus 4. That is what's given. Now remember, when I write it in the orange, it's not actually part of the proof. It's the mental math I need to do. Do you remember what that one's called? It takes me to my second statement that 0 is equal to 2x minus 6 plus 4. Do you remember? That's the distributive property of equality. Okay. Well, in our heads, we need to group those things together. Some teachers are going to call that grouping. Some are going to call it collecting like terms. I'm okay with either one. Either way, my statement is 0 is equal to 2x minus 2. Let's go ahead and just call it grouping. Again, you can call it collecting like terms. Now mentally, I'm realizing this guy needs to move. So the actual fourth statement is that 2 is equal to 2x. What do you think the reason is? Yeah, the addition property of equality. What's the last thing we need to do? Got to get that x alone, right? So technically, in my mind, I'm dividing by 2. So the last statement is 1 is equal to x. How'd we get there? Yeah, the division property of equality. Now you probably feel like you're done, but are you really done? Yes, crazy mathematicians. We like that variable to be on the left. Do you remember what we call that? We're like looking at ourselves in a mirror. You, you feel like it's the reflexive property, but that's not. That's when you deal with shapes. When we deal with numbers and values, it's called the symmetric property of equality. So be careful. I know you want to say reflexive, but it's really not. And there you go, a two-column proof. Here is an example of a two-column proof when we're looking at a geometric picture. So here I have a segment, AC, which is divided into segments AB and segment BC. And notice my congruence marks. I have 5y plus 6 for the length of AB and 2y plus 21 for the length of BC. So the first thing I know is that the length of AB is equal to the length of BC. I know that because of the definition of congruent segments. Notice that I abbreviate definition with a contraction. Remember, that's what apostrophe does is let you take out letters. So definition of, that's my congruent symbol, I know my, my handwriting could be better, segments. It's the equal, equal sign with the tilde. Okay. So now what I know is that 5y plus 6 is equal to 2y plus 21 because this is the length of AB and this is the length of BC. So all I did was I substituted the values. So we'll just call that substitution. Well now, let's do some algebra. Now previously I used orange to show you the math, but I want this to be a clean proof. Would you agree that I need to combine my y's? So this will be 3y plus 6 is equal to 21. How did I move that 2y? I subtracted it. So this is the subtraction property of equality. Well now, I have to move the 6 over to the 21. So my fourth statement will be that 3y is equal to 15. And that was also the subtraction property of equality. Number 5, I get that y equals 5. How do I know that? 
Well, that's the division property of equality. And see, a proof with geometric shapes is really no different than an algebra proof. It's just that I needed the picture to help me set up my algebra statement before I could do it. And this is why we reviewed things like the angle addition postulate and the segment addition postulate, where we talked about the idea of the piece plus the piece being equal to the whole, or when we have congruent sections, that the piece is equal to the piece. So you need to be thinking about that again as we look at these geometric shapes. Is it a piece plus piece equals whole, or a piece equals piece because I have congruency marks, or maybe the word midpoint, or maybe the word bisect.